uh, sorry, at the Riv. Um, so it's, here it's, it's very different. I mean, we, you know, the hotel is just significantly different from that standpoint. Um, in general, you know, one of the things that we have to consider with our infrastructure is it has to be spun up and, and torn down in a matter of days, and it's only used once a year. So we tend to, you know, going back to the money item, we tend to, you know, get what we can, but we can't really justify something because we're not seeing a 360-day use out of it. So a lot of our infrastructure tends to be fairly, you know, uh, fairly older equipment. We're still getting stuff off eBay. There's certain, you know, purchases which we make of newer gear just for targeted applications. The Aruba, uh, the core for, to a certain degree, and a lot of stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we have, you know, sitting in our, sitting as part of our infrastructure, um, I keep looking at this and I want to say, here's what our infrastructure is versus here's the challenges. We're going to go over the actual infrastructure in a bit. So I'll leave that. So <clears throat> uh, bandwidth, we actually have 100 megs bandwidth this year. Yeah. Uh, it's a metro area ethernet. It's that's, not a, a Wi-Fi point to point. So. I was going to say, so that's the uplink we have is 100 meg. Um, between all of the IDFs and, you know, to, the, to the Aruba gear, et cetera, we're sitting on gig backbones. Um, you know, we could argue, hey, we should have more, but realistically looking at some of the graphic trends or looking at some of the traffic trends, uh, we haven't really been pushing more than a couple hundred meg. Uh, so it's, I mean, I think it's high for a, con uh, for a convention usage, but it's not high for an overall usage, especially compared to the gear we have. I remember a couple of years ago, there was uh, Dave Bullock, whose photos are in uh, a lot of these here, but Dave Bullock did an article on the DEF CON network, and in the comments below, people are like, oh, why don't you have gigabit? Because at CCC, we have 10 gig. Wait a minute, we don't need 10 gig. We can't justify it. We have to be able to justify what we're going to pay for. And you know, they, in Europe, they may actually have uh, companies that will donate bandwidth to them. We don't have that luxury. I mean, we're in a hotel. We have to pay the proper channels and get the proper things. Uh, Encore is actually the one who provided that to us. So, as and a convention, when we say justify it, we're talking about you guys. You're really what justify it. So, if you know, you find something you want to use more <laughs> bandwidth for, outside of torrenting, because a lot of people just see that as not easily justified. But if you have some really application, something you want to play with and test with here, now. This is a good network to do it on. So think about that, especially for next year. And the other thing that, that I think we kind of have to dispel is the, the rumor that, oh, don't go on the DEF CON network, because you'll get hacked, right? Because if, if you don't use the network, we don't justify that we can add more bandwidth, that we can add more things. So it, it's kind of a chicken and egg. All right. That's my job, so keep pulling down stuff, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see, device, uh, so wireless, do you want to talk about wireless? Yeah, sure. So for the wireless, um, for any wireless implementation, there are two major concerns. One is, of course, coverage, right? You want access wherever you are, in, the, in this case, in the common areas. Uh, but also here we have, or any convention, you have a problem that is user density. So I can put one access point here, and it's going to cover this whole huge space. But uh, once we have a lot of people, um, it goes away really fast. So technology evolved a lot uh, on the wireless market and wireless devices. The things that you still limited to certain number of users that are going to share that one access point. So then it comes to the to the user density is going. <clears throat> A way to the only way to solve that is that you're going to need more access points, and once you have more access points, they're going to start seeing each other, and they're going to start in, interfering with each other, and that's not good either. Uh, so wireless in the U.S. usually we use uh, channels one, six, and eleven. Uh, that's what we should use, and so if you have more than three APs in the same place. Um, they're going, to, they're going to interfere with each other. So it's good to have a solution that deals with that automatically. Uh, the other problem that we had in the, I was going to say in the past, but we still have some funny things happening, is device compa compatibility. Um, this used to happen a lot. Uh, for the past few years, it didn't happen. 
but last year, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that, uh, we had an issue with iPads, and uh, it came back this year. Uh, once it came to, you put that in sleep mode, it wouldn't come back, so you had to, there was a workaround for that. But again, it's always like, it takes like a couple people to say, oh, I can't get on the network. Uh, we hear that really fast, and we try to fix it. Uh, the other problem we have is time. I mean, we, we do not have an infinite amount of time. We have um, basically three to four days to do setup. We're here for a week on site. Um, we have lots and lots of gear that we bring with, either gets thrown on, in a car or gets shipped from someplace. Um, all of us come from across the country and maybe even outside of the country. We have two Canadians here up on stage who can represent, right? Great. Um, we're a team of 10 people, essentially, that you know, work throughout the year. We'll have like a pre-con meeting where we'll come out to the hotel and make sure everything's the same, make sure things are working, um, and then just do things over email every once in a while or, or have a conference call. Um, the team's kind of broken up into the infrastructure, which is Mac and I, the Wi-Fi, which is Louise, Eric, and Heather, uh, and then the video, which is Derek, and then we've got the two managers, so Heather and Locke as well. So. And the ground pounders. All right. Don't forget about our ground pounders. They're pretty critical. What? what? Don't ground forget support. about the ground support. They're pretty critical. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have the bean counters. <laughs> um, all right, so the, this is the map, essentially, right? This is all the areas that we have to cover. Um, and we weren't really expecting... I think that we we're, we're going to be able to do the reg desk or the uh, schwag area, just from the perspective that we hadn't gotten requests for it. Um, and Penn and Teller Theater, I think, was that also? It was the last minute. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, we kind of had to scrounge this year because we were expecting X and we got X plus. <laughs> but you know, we, we do with what we can. Um, and this is a lot of ground to cover. If you look at this map, it's, it's a fairly large space. Uh, it's covering, this is like five or six IDFs, right? Uh, oh, three, four, five, six. Uh, six IDFs, one catwalk space, and one, uh, sorry, one uh, under theater space, and one uh, cable TV head in space. So we had to put equipment into switches and all those. Nine yeah. different cabinets. Yeah. And IDF uh, is inner, inner domain feed, right? There. Uh, I've always had it as intermediate distribution frame there you go. versus master uh, local. Israeli Defense Force. Israeli Defense Force. <laughs> Basically, it, it's a wire. It's a telco cabinet, or sorry, telco closet, or where you know where you drop all of your network, or so all of your wall drops come back to what is considered an IDF, and then that will link up to uh, a central IDF, which is usually called the master. And it, this year, we didn't have to work through uh, any bathrooms to get to ours. Yeah. <laughs> I still wish we had better pictures from that one. That was, yeah. There, there is an IDF in the bathroom in the RIV. It's awesome. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is where our equipment... Oh, that's... Never mind. Anyway. Uh, so this is kind of basically the structure of the network. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's a really busy slide and you're not going to be able to see anything. Um, but at least gives you a concept of this, is, this was pre-putting uh, the stuff in place. Post is a little different because we had to do some workarounds, but it's almost where we're, we're at right now. Uh, this is a map of where all the access points are, essentially. Uh, do you want to talk about this one a little bit, Louise? Um, what is important here to see is that we cannot, so we have tools that say this is the optimal uh, location for the access points according to RF logic and uh, whatever the smart people put into softwares that calculate that. Um, but of course we depend on many things including where the drops are, uh, how, how high we can put the access points and all that stuff. So this might not look optimal but that's how we have it and then we deal with in configuration with basic rates and transmit rates and all that good stuff uh, to make number one coverage uh, work all over the place as you can see on that one 
and also avoiding interference and um, roaming because roaming is quite important, right? You start, you, sh you turn on your device here in this room and you're gonna be walking around. You don't want to drop whatever you're doing on your, on your device, so that's important. Uh, here's a graph that we just pulled at about 2 o'clock today. Um, as you can see, we did peak at some point on our 100 meg connection. Um, there's two, two pretty, pretty big spikes there. And apparently last night, y'all went out and partied. Because <laughs> you can see that there's a big traffic drop. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about what worked for us in this space. Um, We'll talk also a little bit about what we have to improve on. But so secure Wi-Fi, I think, does everybody like the secure Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yes. All right. So I mean, you can thank Louise, Eric, Locke, those guys for setting all that stuff up. Locke actually did the Radius database back end. And the, the, I think uh, Tease also did the front end for that. So you could go in and enter in credentials offsite. Um, we actually have that server living here, and then you know, when we pop up our internet connectivity, that's what you're talking to is directly into our network on that, that machine. Um, <clears throat> I think it's very important that, that we have that because it allows for some sense of uh, privacy. Um, I, I mean, from the perspective that we don't actually ship those VLANs off to the wall of sheep. Um, we made that conscious, conscious decision last year. We, we, we basically said, all right, if we're going to give people a secure network, there's got to be some semblance that there's an understanding that it's secure, which means that, yeah, maybe you have POP3 still enabled. Maybe you have to telnet to a router. Maybe you have to do something like that. Um, but we don't want the wall of sheep to, get, to grab it. It's, it's just the well, wrong thing to do. We don't want to give it explicitly to the wall of sheep, I think is the, the best way to put it. Because, I mean, the, the traffic, once it leaves our, our uplink, is going across the internet. Anyone can man in the middle it at that point. But we're not going to explicitly go out of our way and do it you know, at the beginning. We want to make sure you have some semblance. It's still up to you to secure probably end to end, just from the standpoint of you don't know who, out is, who else is out on the internet. So you do need to protect yourself. But we're going to do what we can in that space. And, and the other thing that we've done is we've disallowed peer-to-peer -peer traffic. So if you get on the Wi-Fi, you're only going to see the MAC address of the firewall and the access points that you're talking to. You're not going to be able to see anybody else's traffic. You're not going to be able to map other people on the network because you only have internet outbound. Does that make sense? It's a good thing. I mean, it, 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 it's how we're trying to protect people from, from getting pwned. I mean, that's why you don't use the open Wi-Fi. So we just you can actually the use the open Wi-Fi. You're more than welcome to check all your email and do all your banking on the open Wi-Fi. <laughs> the wall of sheep gets that traffic. So does everybody else around you. <laughs> exactly. Yes, fire sheep, right? Anyway. Uh, internet connection, 100 meg, we covered that. Did anybody realize that we had IPv6? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Has anybody Cheers. gone to an IPv6 site? <laughs> no. Yeah. Fail. No, it, I'm just kidding. You know, from, from what we saw, you know, 0.2% of you did something with IPv6, um, that, which actually mirrors the rest of the uh, general internet traffic, so that's not too surprising. <laughs> but Once the pirate base switches over, everybody will, the traffic will go up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is true. We should talk to them about that one. So uh, what was the, we were tunneling at outbound, right? Yeah, we, we were using a tunnel broker, or sorry, tunnel with tunnel broker slash Hurricane Electric. So good company. If you want to do your own IV, IPv6 stuff, go with them. Uh, let's see, the Wi-Fi was updated. We had a software update on the controller that um, allowed us to do some good stuff. 